if we're thinking about, you know, if we are going to recruit someone, you know, obviously there are, there's a lot of the time there is a, a definite requirement, but you know, on occasion, sometimes it's just, you know, if you find a, a really a good person, someone that you really think is going to be a great addition to the team, then, you know, it's hard to be in that position. So, so sometimes you, it's, it's, it's worth saying, okay, you know, we will not kind of just continue taking people on and just, you know, actually just find, find their, their role a little bit more fluid organically when they're in, but actually capturing that talent is a, is a really important thing because, you know, it's, it's not myself and Ben creating the work, it's all these guys. And so, um, and, I, and, I, and although there is obviously, you know, more experience, less experience, cross-section of the team, um, we try not to be too hierarchical that actually, you know, the ideas have to come from the top and that, you know, if, if, if one of the youngest members of the team comes up with a corker of an idea, then brilliant, you know, it will fly. So that's, that is, I think we've always been relatively um, sort of democratic in that sense. But, but, you know, recruitment is probably the toughest thing, I think, because I suppose, you know, we've, we've carved ourselves a, a position in the sort of the, you know, the upper band of, of, of creative studios. And that means 90% of people are already, you have to kind of disregard when you're looking to take someone on. And then within that 10%, you have to find the right person and that whittles it down to 1%. And before you know it, actually, you know, it's really, really difficult to put together a, you know, the team you want, which is, I think probably why we're we're the size we are because we're for two reasons. Firstly, um, we do believe that sort of small is somewhat beautiful, and the fact that the number of people that we are, and we're around twenty people, um, broken across uh, project management and creative team, um, weighted more heavily in the creative side. Um, you know, there's only a certain number of people that myself and Ben can really be across and, and, and make sure that all the output is what it needs to be and we, we, we know keeping our creative bar up very high um, you know as soon as you start getting 30 35 people it's impossible to do that and and so because of that um, you know we feel this is a quite a, sort of a controlled number of people um, but also because actually you know there aren't that many really good people out there so you can't just go and build a you know a team twice as big with the same quality of, of, of person, so it's a, it's a, it's, it's a wrangle. It really is. It really is tough. Yeah, in terms of the way that we work, I think we we always try and start the project in the sense that we spoke at the beginning, this sense of bridging vision and obsession together. So we will always try and start a project where we come together. We have a, a an intuitive feel for where that project might take us. Mm. Um, work with the design teams to get to that point um, or, or an individual designer to get to that point and then it will be sort of assigned almost to a designer within the studio with a guardianship of one of us or, or both of us depending on the type of project. It really depends on the type of project but I think what we really understand now is when we both agree on a, when we both agree on a solution or a feeling for something it tends to be right. When yeah. one of us doesn't feel that it's one of us really believes in something, the other one doesn't. Yeah. Tends to not be the right, the right field or the right solution. I mean, the reality, the the honest reality of it, is actually, you know, being very busy means it's actually very difficult for me and Ben to be together. You know, working with the guys together, it's actually, you know, the the, the, the realisms of, of a busy studio is the fact that I've got a meeting here, Ben's got a meeting there, and actually we can be like ships in the night, and it's and that's a challenge. Um, but on the occasions where we do get to kind of converge. That's when I think you know decisions are made most effectively. The guys, the guys get a, should we say, a consistent feedback from us because obviously Ben can think one thing, I can come along and derail that by saying something completely different, and it's difficult for these guys to to kind of mediate our opinion. So, so one thing we're trying to do much more in the studio, sort of moving forward, is is actually particularly at the start of new projects where it's a, a new creative challenge, actually make sure that you know myself and Ben and the guys are really aligned on what our vision is for it. And then hopefully that will lead to a more sort of a, a smoother kind of journey to, to, the, to the end result. Um, but that's difficult because it's really easy to get wrapped up in the daily routines of being everywhere all the time and, and then realise that, God, we've not sat together for two days and that's really wrong, you know. I, I think inherent in any project is this sort of careful mix of and again, it sounds a little bit cliche, but head and heart. 
and mm -hmm. and and any project needs to have those two blends and they can come from, from different perspectives on any, on any one of our projects so I can have a firm gut feeling and belief that this pool can have a much more from the head a more intelligent response and it's somehow blending those two or, or vice versa mm -hmm. where pool's got a very intuitive feel and I'm trying to add an intellect or a story to it to understand it it's when those two are carefully balanced that fulcrum point between the two is kind of where it becomes interesting as a project there are, there are moments where the other where the opposite works and actually you know if it's a project that Ben's been sort of working on with the guys for some time and I've not really been part of it, being able to drop in it with fresh eyes and go, well, that's not right. Yeah, it's frustrating for them, but actually sometimes that clarity of just a, a new pair of eyes and ears on it, you can come up with, you can very quickly see what's either missing or it should maybe twist to and things like that. So, um, but there's no, in an ideal world, we'd all be sat together and yeah. it'd I, all be I know, think if very utopian. Yeah. But <laughs> If there was a secret formula for reducing good work, God, I'd, I'd have written the book a long time ago and I'd have had a lot less sleepless nights. Yeah. It, I just don't, I don't know quite what it is, but it's a whole series of inputs that all vary all the time. Um, but ultimately, when you're, when you can feel it here and there's a passion for that idea and you know that you can see that through and craft it through, then... I mean, that's all you can really work with. You've got, to, you've got to grab onto something and see it through, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, critique is such a difficult thing to give because it is, it's bound with that idea of head and heart. Sometimes it's just a gut feeling and then you need to intellectualise it or you're intellectualising it and trying to give a story to it to articulate it. And somewhere between those two is where the real critique will sit. I think the only experience we've had is, obviously, remember, we've got quite limited agency experience we've only ever both worked at North Design which was a great great period um, and then there it was very much an informal process where you'd be constantly reminded by some of the more senior figures that that's not good enough <laughs> and then you try and push it yeah. to make sure they didn't say that and well, that was a kind of a it was a little bit kind of um, it was it was more of a sort of camarader camaraderie approach where you're all in it together so everyone's responsible for it being good um, so if one of the older guys might say to you, you know, Paul, that's that should be better than that. What's that? You know, you go, oh, okay, right. And then and then yeah. and that was it. it. Was never any kind of formal kind of critique there. So that's kind of we've never known that kind of, I would say, more structured presentation. But I do think effort. there are two things that allow good work to happen. One is a level, a, a, a dash of competition, to, and that doesn't mean everyone's pitching up with ideas on the wall. We don't work like that. We don't believe that's a good way of working. But a sense of like um, achievement and, and, and pushing things individually, and then other designers thinking, God, I wish I could have done that. I think that's health. That is a healthy in measure. Um, and the other part is ownership. Is to in order to ensure that a design has ownership of a project, mm -hmm. means that they will they will commit more of themselves into that project, mm -hmm. and therefore they're, they're, the outcome is always much better because of that. So again, it's just trying to keep those two ideas or two component parts in check.